Good evening, Jordan Trask here. It's the 22nd, we're almost to Christmas. Three days away and I've almost made it to my 25th day of Christmas. So far, 21 strategies, a whole bunch of randomness. Today I drew financial advisor, financial services, financial, financial consultation for my random holiday strategy. So I'm just gonna jump right into this. I'm not gonna do a huge intro today to paint a picture. And um, really what I'm, what I'm thinking of when somebody's looking for financial help, right, they probably have already received some sort of consultation elsewhere. They probably have a business consultant, maybe they're starting a business, maybe they ran into some problems and somebody's told them, hey, you need to try this. I know for me, I went to Financial Peace once and I sought some help because uh, you know, I, I don't have the experience and, and know how and how to get some things in order, but for the most part, People need to have that nudge, a push in the direction to, to hire somebody, right? To pay somebody to help them get their finances in order. And so if I'm, if I'm an advisor, a financial advisor, um, and I wanna reach people during the holiday season, I think the easiest way uh, to do so is to, to share some sort of message that helps people uh, budget better or save money or hold back uh, from from so much loose spending during the holidays. I think it can be tempting with all the advertisements, uh, maybe peer pressure, maybe your neighbor or your buddies going all out and you know you want to go all out. Maybe uh, you're a gal and you just want to get everybody gifts. Maybe you just had your first successful year, right? And you got a lot of money to be able to bless a lot of people and, and you do that. And these things are all fine. It's all your preferences. It's your money. But at the end of the day, I think everybody, uh, uh, there's a message for everybody to uh, tone it down a little bit or be more uh, wise with the way that you, you dish, dish out the cash or how you go about spending, spending it. And then being able to assess kind of your surroundings, right? If you have a family, if there's uh, other large purchases that you've made, if you're kind of going too fast, buying too many things too fast, if your credit's bad, if you got a lot of debt, all these things need to be considered before you're just uh, splurging, right? And I think, um, you know, initially when it comes to, you know, financial uh, businesses and stuff, I think if, if you're not already doing this, then you need to be, but that's educating people and giving them tips, giving them guides, giving them, um, you know, planners, even uh, schedules or, or plans or, or just free things here and there that help them budget better, that they can download or hold on to, put in their pocket, put on their fridge, print out, give to somebody, email to somebody, post on social media. Um, because that's, that's your expertise, right? It's just like me doing videos like this or other videos I've done in the past about content production or, or imagery uh, or just SEO stuff, right? This is all stuff that I have experience in that I wanna share with you. Not I'm not asking you to pay me for it, but I want you to see that I'm a competent individual, that I understand these things, that I, I have a ton of experience, I know what I'm doing and I'm, and I'm good at it, right? And it's something I take a lot of pride in. And I want you to do well in it too. Um, so, if, if I know finances, if I know how to budget, if I know, you know, even stocks, right, or investments, then these are the types of things we need to share. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit different than me. You don't want to give away the barn. You don't want to give away your service totally, but you want to show your knowledge. You want to be able to at least show that you can educate people, right? And so initially, that's what I'm thinking here with this holiday strategy is, is if we're going to do a TV commercial, you know, that's what I'm really trying to focus on aside from the just the typical stuff you ought to be doing anyways content wise it's free it's evergreen it, it doesn't go away and people can always uh, access it tap into it right and sure um, so that's just a no-brainer to me you should already be doing that um, only costs a couple thousand dollars if, if you're a financial advisor you know during the holidays paying for a 90 90 day strategy it maybe cost you five grand you know publish 15 blogs 45 social media posts, a couple uh, backlinks with people that are relevant, going down a whole nother strategy. But you know, you pay 5,000 bucks, you get two clients out of it, maybe over a year's time. I'm, I'm gonna assume that your service is a couple thousand dollars, you know? So you're gonna make that money back. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good investment. And if you're a financial advisor, you don't understand these little elements of marketing and, and the, the aspect of the return, um, then you're welcome, <laughs> I guess, because I mean, if it's done bad, if, if you're just doing it to do it right, you just hire somebody to, to do it right, or you're paying somebody that's not a financial advisor to write it, and you're duplicating content, obviously that can penalize you and hurt you, hinder the brand perception, and, and discredit you, if, if especially if you're duplicating. Uh, somebody were to find that, that delegitimizes everything that you're saying. But if you pay somebody that really knows what they're doing, it takes pride in it, you have unique content uh, with a unique message that's tied into your value and your culture, right, your, your identity, 
uh, that's something people remember, right? So um, that's fruitful stuff. That's stuff that you, you can share with people all throughout the holidays. So once you write this stuff, you pretty much have a script for the holidays or for the Christmas time, or even Thanksgiving, traveling, um, maybe saving energy. Like if you got Christmas lights, right? Uh, you got generators, whatever you got running. Uh, how do you be more efficient? How can you cut costs here and there? Um, you know, cooking stuff. How do you uh, make sure that, you know, if you're having a bunch of people over, right, you're not running up the bill or, or maybe you shouldn't have a bunch of people over if, if, you're, if you're facing certain hardships or difficulties or setbacks, right? Um, here's a checklist that you can look at that helps you um, maybe reassess the plan. And if you feel like you're going to let people down, be vulnerable, be honest, tell them that you're struggling. You might get some extra gifts. I don't know. But don't 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 bend over backwards and break the bank and then set yourself up in the new year. Right. Start off the new year in, in a financially crippling situation. Um, and I think as a financial advisor, you, you have to take a stance as almost not like a coach, because I think there's different types of people that like different types of coaches, but maybe as far as business coach, but maybe more like a football coach, right? That's, um, well, probably not yelling and stuff, but maybe it's really more direct, um, a personal trainer, let's say that. That's gonna tell you what maybe you don't wanna hear, that's gonna uh, be really forward with, with the message, and then be able to bring it all home and say, it's because I care about you, right? It's because I know what I'm doing, I dealt with this in the past, Here's some people that dealt with this in the past that have helped, that I've helped, that have made some sacrifices. Now they're living, uh, like, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, what's that guy's name that says live like you know, live like you like nobody else, so you can live like uh, everybody else, like nobody else. Dave Ramsey, the financial peace. I was saying that before. So you know, helping people understand that it's, it's the discipline aspect of life, right? That helps you find that fulfillment. What can you give up to attain something else? And it's not an exchange, it's a disciplinary act of, uh, could be work ethic, it could be um, uh, just fortitude, right? An ability to say no, telling people no, like I mentioned before with just uh, hosting. Um, there's all kinds of things. My point is there's all kinds of things, ways that you can advise people financially. And we're not even talking about gift giving, right? How do you give gifts on a budget? What are some good gifts? That's an amazing one. Uh, what are some good gifts for people that they will love, that they will remember that are unique, um, that you, you want to have the best gift if you're that type of person. You can still do that, but you don't have to spend, you know, you don't have to buy the Tiffany's bracelets for all your sisters just because you had a good year. You know, invest that in something. Why don't you buy them an investment? Buy them some stocks. Give it to them and let that stuff accrue over time. And what type, That's a great gift. And if you got a financial advice for that and then you give that, um, to your loved ones, uh, you know, something that you invested in, now they get a piece as a gift. I mean, now you're, you're making money off of it too and it's just all this, this fruitful thing. So finding, your way, finding a way, I think a lot of people struggle and a lot of people run into problems in life in general because they try to do it all themselves, right? And I think most people in general will die that way. They'll die on those hills trying to do everything themselves to prove themselves or just out of pride, right? Um, or maybe even just an unwillingness to seem weak or that they need help. I met tons of people that just won't ask questions, that will just guess or uh, make, make so many mistakes trying different things instead of just finding somebody that can really help them and redirect them. And I think um, any type of commercial thing is just breathing a bug there. Um, <laughs> so if I cough, sorry. But any, any type of person that um, really wants to, um, that, I think every type of person, let me rephrase this, uh, really wants to uh, to do better. And I think instead of proving it to yourself, you gotta be able to find somebody that can help you. And uh, not everybody um, receives that well, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I think if you're gonna do a commercial in this, this season, you know, it's easy to do something funny to catch people's attention, to do something, you know, jolly, right? To focus on giving and all that. But what if you really just caught somebody off guard uh, you know, as they're watching their favorite show and just hit them with a bunch of convictions, <laughs> you know, like you could see the, a business owner or, or the man of the house or, or a mom, right? That's sitting on the couch and all of a sudden this comes across and, and like they check seven out of the 10 boxes about what this person is saying. Are you dealing with this? Does this frustrate you? Do you keep running into these problems? Uh, are you unable to do this? Are you unable to do that? Um, 
you know, would you like these things? And then somebody's just sitting on the couch, just kind of like, dang, yeah. And it's just that conviction and just really in your face, but telling them that, mapping out that process instead of saying, you can get this, you can be financial free, and you can blah, 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 blah for $999, get a couple of sessions and I'll equip you. No, talk about the, the what happens, not just what you can do uh, and why they should do it, right? Because that, that makes sense, it's gonna make sense, but talk about the fruit a year down the road. Talk about the things that they'll be able to do or the things that maybe they won't have a desire to do anymore um, once they're able to taste something else. Talk about paradigm shifts. A lot of people don't even know what that means. Uh, you know, having a paradigm shift and being able to change and seeing the world in a whole new light, right? Most of us are limited by our own perspective. And, and um, I think a lot of professionals in general are just afraid to come across as offensive. But when you really think about it, if 90% of the people that see the commercial are offended, maybe they do complain on social media, like these people are probably never gonna hire you anyways. It's that 10% that it triggers something that gets them thinking, that gets them on their website, that gets them to eventually pull the trigger. And if you spend 10, 20, 30 grand on, on that uh, production project, um, and it, based on the strategy I'm talking about, I don't even think it would even cost, um, you know, the, to the 10,000 to do a video like this. You could do something really simple, like a, like a, a forward facing setting as, as the uh, expert, right? You have to show show that, talk to them, introduce yourself. Um, but anyways, that's um, that's gonna resonate with somebody and uh, they're gonna remember that. And um, I kinda lost my train of thought there where I was going with that because uh, I got distracted with how I wanted to, to pos uh, position the video. But anyways, that's what I was gonna say is, you know, maybe 10,000 cost you $10,000 to do a little forward facing commercial. My brain's working super fast. You know, you sign 10%, say it gets in front of a million people. What's 10% of a million? You know, multiply that by your service, right? How much is that? That's tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? And even if maybe you just get those people on the phone, maybe you only close 2%, like most people do. Well, I mean, of course I get a phone call. Uh, maybe you only close 2 to 4%, right? Um, but... Two to four percent of a hundred grand. Let's just say hundred grand people, uh, you know, are interested. Maybe they don't contact you, but two percent. What is that? Two percent of a hundred. That's like two hundred people, right? So two, three hundred people that eventually, maybe over the next year, that call you, have a conversation with you, appreciate your service, get a consultation, recommend you all these things. That it's not just a reach campaign where you're getting exposure and getting in front of all these people, and you got this message, and I'm gonna cross my fingers and somebody is gonna connect. No, you're actually engaging people with a high quality content, a really good message that's direct, that seeps in, that convicts them, that makes them feel like they have to take action, that they are inadequate, that helps them see their deficiencies, right? That helps them see the leaky buckets in their business or life that they're continuously facing that maybe no one else has to deal with, but they do. I know each of us have these types of things financially that we struggle with, whether it's stuff that we buy or stuff that we wanna buy, right? Or stuff that we can't give up or stuff that become we could become accustomed to that limits us from getting other things like people don't even really think and I'm going to go on a soapbox here you know if you get a Starbucks every day that's that's just just going to just going to work that's at least 25 bucks a week multiply that by 52 I mean we're talking about 10 grand a year over 10 grand a year just on coffee you could buy a boat go buy a boat buy a couple jet skis have some fun you don't you can't give up a couple of coffees you can't buy some coffee you can't grow some coffee um you know, you like strawberries, you can't grow some strawberries, you can't grow some avocados, those are real expensive. What if you had an avocado garden and it cost you? Anyways, these are all these things that a financial advisor is is the best person to advise anybody on. And um, just talking about what you know, getting people engaged, like you can really, really, really make a big dent in the world and also in, in your productivity and your revenue, right? Um, Talking at people all the time, I, I never like that type of stuff. The sales pitch, try to get excited, try to say, and maybe I'm doing it right now, just talking as fast as I can. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'm selling you on anything, but uh, those those talking heads that, that ramble, that have all these disclaimers or disclosures at the bottom of the screen that if you want to do this, you want to do that, this blah, 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 this may happen, that may happen. You know, we don't want to sell stuff like it's a, it's a prescription drug that may or may not help. We want to sell stuff with certainty. We want to market it. We don't even want to sell it. We want to market the value, um, showcase the showcase the value, showcase the competence and the quality 
That's just the personality, the actuality of the business, the service itself, who you are as a person. Don't be fluffy. Don't try to persuade anybody to like you or convince anybody to hire you. The people that appreciate what you're saying are the people that you want to hire, the people that you want to work with. That's your identity. Um, you know, that that's what they identify with. So I think that would be the easy, that would be the smartest thing in my opinion. Obviously, you know, you can, Geico does it all the time where they just do hilarious stuff and it works, you know, but that's kind of a monopolized market, right? So, I mean, I don't know if that's really comparable, but in any, in, in, in any industry, you know, you can do humor and people will remember you, but if they remember you for your value and something that you said that really hit home, uh, that had, gave them a paradigm shift, uh, whether they hire you or not, that's something that they always will remember. So, um, financial advisor, uh, financial consultant, what would you do if that's, if that's your industry, uh, if you're doing something, what would you do? Would you, would you keep it cheesy? Would you keep it engaging? Or would you keep it very, very direct? If you disagree with me, I'd love to hear why. If you tried something like that before and it didn't work, I'd love to hear why. I'd love to hear how. I'd love to, I'd love to hear, you know, how you went about it, I guess. Um, because that, that equips me with better ways to advise my clients too in, in, in different avenues and stuff. And obviously, these are all the types of questions that we would go through. It's what a pre-focus is. We're not just gonna have an idea. It's not about the ideation. It's not about the creation. It's about the purpose and the value. It's about the return. It's about making good decisions and having good ideas and making sure that they're not just gonna be immediately fruitful, but uh, fruitful over the long run. So be purposeful with everything you do, guys. And always remember to pre-focus. Thanks for tuning in.